Hey there everyone. Uh, in this video, we're, we are going to finish the exterior of the box. In the next video, we're going to put this top piece on. We'll build this. I'll show you how to build this. Uh, put the, the plexiglass on, uh, all the hinges, all the kind of the intricate stuff, and see how it stacks up to the sun oven. Uh, so far, so good. It looks fairly similar to the actual sun oven itself, uh, but the proof is going to be in the pudding whether it works or not. Uh, that's the important part, if it works as well as the sun oven. Uh, but really excited to get this project done, almost there. Uh, but in this video, let's go ahead, let me explain how I put this exterior of the box together. Now I started off by cutting some cardboard because I wanted to make a, a separation layer between the actual uh, insulation and the metal inside, the tin inside. So I just cut out some cardboard pieces, and then I actually used those as templates uh, to cut the, the, the uh, insulation here. I'm using this stuff called Fomular, uh, but honestly you can use, you know, regular insulation isn't all that great because some of it has asbestos in it, I can give off fumes and smells. Uh, but you could use a straw, a newspaper, you could use a, a bunch of pieces of cardboard, whatever you have handy. Uh, I used this stuff. I ended up buying three sheets of it and I only needed one. So you could get one of these sheets from Home Depot or the hardware store. Uh, I made sure and put this, the cardboard and the insulation in all the different pockets on this, uh, the solar oven, uh, including the bottom panel. It's got two spots on the bottom where you need to put it as well. And then once you have all of those uh, in place, you've got the cardboard in there along with the, the insulation. I moved on to cutting the side panels. Now I didn't get any video footage of this, but what the, the side panels are, uh, what I did was cut the two sides first and then the front and back. And that's because the front and back, you want it to be the width of this box with these panels on. So it was just easier to measure everything with the two side panels on. Now also with this, uh, I made sure and made the back of this box a half an inch taller than the box itself. And that's because this back post uh, lays flat. And when I put this piece on, I want it to uh, be able to stay there where it's supposed to be and have this back closed rather than having a gap back here that needs to be sealed up. Uh, so I made sure and cut that a little bit longer. All of these dimensions and details are going to be at DIYprepping.net. Uh, so you can just click the description below and get access to all of that. Now next what I did was I wanted to put a couple of screws in here just to hold it in place. I didn't want to have to put the clamp on after it was painted. So in each of these panels I just made a couple of, of screw holes. Uh, made sure and drill them first and then um, and put the screws in just to make sure everything was going to be in place before I painted it, uh, going to be in the right place before I painted everything. Again, this may not, you know, it, it's kind of an optional step. I just did it uh, just for precautionary measures. And after that, what I did was just painted everything with Kills Primer. And the reason I did that is because this, this wood, this unfinished wood really soaks up that spray paint. Uh, so you wanna make sure uh, and get a, a, you know, a coat of paint on there. That way this can, uh, this one can will, will do this entire project. But if I didn't prime it first, I would have had to went out and bought another can. But uh, when you apply the spray paint, pretty, fairly simple. This doesn't uh, spray on like regular spray paint does. So it takes just a few coats across everything. Uh, but like I said, you can finish this entire project with one can of spray paint and even have a little bit left over. Uh, to get those outside seams. I'm still debating whether I want to spray paint over the screws themselves or leave them that brass type color that they are. Uh, we'll, see. we'll see what it turns out like in the future, but uh, fairly simple. And then the next part is just attaching the panels to the box. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. Those screw holes you, you did earlier, uh, just fasten the screws into all of those and then drill as many as you think are necessary on the box. For me, on these side panels, I did three across the bottom uh, and then two in the middle of the top, uh, just enough to, to hold that in place. If you want to put a few more in, you can, uh, but it, and it's, it's completely up to you. Okay, and that's, that's basically it for this video. Uh, other than one more thing I want to do, uh, I want to put on my own personal branding on the sun oven. Uh, so I'm going to grab one of my stickers here 
my apocalypse squirrel and put that on here. We're right in the middle. And then we've got our survivalist prepper solar oven. Uh, in the next video, like I said, we're going to be putting on uh, this top panel. I'll show you how to build that. We're going to be fitting this plexiglass on there. Uh, like I said before, I'm probably going to end up using something different than this plexiglass in the future. But for right now, this should do just fine. Uh, I've got some a gasket that I'm going to use as well. We're going to put the hinges on and finish this whole project up so we can actually start cooking in it and see how well it stacks up against uh, the All-American Sun Oven, which, you know, it, like I said, it probably won't do as well as the All-American Sun Oven. That thing is fantastic. Uh, but if we can get close, then I've got two different things I can use when I'm dehydrating or, or have other stuff to cook. So, But with that, you can get all the detailed instructions over at DIYprepping.net uh, from the beginning to this point. Uh, and then the next video will be the finished project. So if you're watching this in the future, this project is probably all done. And all of that stuff is over at DIYprepping.net. Uh, but if you haven't, make sure and subscribe to the channel below. Uh, we will talk to everyone later.